Greetings, my name is Darkwit. Today we're going to be doing something called getting into character. It's an experiment at experiencing being someone besides yourself, in a sense it's more in-depth than the usual transformative experience. This is best listened to with headphones in a place where you can relax safely, either by sitting or lying down. So make sure that you're not doing any driving or operating heavy machinery or anything else that usually they would warn you at the start of these kinds of files. Just take a moment to get comfortable and relax. Inhale through the nose. One, two, three. And exhale through the mouth. One, two, three. Take a deep breath in. And then out. We've been here before. It's a familiar rhythm. The cycle for the nose and to the mouth. Very good. Let's begin with an exercise in visualization. Imagine, if you will, a hallway with green carpets and cream-colored walls, frames with pictures of colors swirling and bleeding together, six of them to be exact, between you and the door. Six frames from the door, swirling arcs of tantalizing red. You could pause for a moment to look. It's fine. Take in all the details. It's almost sensual, deep, and alluring. Then, when you've had your fill, walk forward five frames from the door. Take as long or as short as you like as you observe the geometric painting of orange and white, the triangle next to a circle of equal size. The colors almost look like candy or some kind of ice cream, reminding you of a simpler time, a quieter time. Walking forward to the next painting, four frames from the door, you can see intricate golden flourishes, wordless calligraphy, embossed on a black background. It catches the light, shimmering. We don't need to count the seconds. It's almost as if we're casually wandering inside a museum. Spend the time that feels right for you. And then, move forward again, three frames from the door. Green banana leaves stamped onto a white canvas, calming and relaxing. Serenity in simplicity. Two frames from the door. It's of a seascape now, lovely, soothing waves rocking under a light blue horizon where the blur between the ocean and the sky seem to be imperceptible. You can almost imagine them gently moving, rocking you back and forth. One frame from the door. A black night sky with stars glowing like violet jewels. It's something you can just stare into, noticing more pinpricks of violet light. The longer you sit here, acclimatizing to the dark. And then you reach the brown wooden door with a silver handle. It opens easily. The green carpet, green-colored walls seem to fade away a little bit into a different room. 
There's a brown leather chase, a psychologist's fainting couch, across from an armchair, where you can see a black silhouette outlined by cyan. Yours truly. It's not too far away from the doorway to the chase, about five steps. You could see them on the carpet, almost as if they're highlighted before you. As I count down, just feel yourself lift up your foot and take the first step. Five, gradually making your way over towards this side of the room. Four, into the threshold of the office, stepping through the doorway into a private space. Gentle white noise in the background keeps the room secluded from the outside world. Three, you are somewhere safe where you don't need to worry about things bleeding into the outside world. What happens in here stays in here. It doesn't say anything about who you are. It's simply something you can enjoy with me. Two steps away. The outside world is a distance behind you now. Separated by the doorway and your own semblance of consciousness. It might even feel far away. You're doing very well. One step. Almost there. And then you are feeling yourself lay down on that soft leather chase. And then you're back in the doorway. Perhaps it was all in your head. Let's try this again. Five. It feels easier to walk this time. Each step is more automatic, familiar. Four. Completely natural, almost totally effortless. Three. Gliding in so smoothly, it's as if you're not even touching the ground. Two. You don't even need to think about it. One. And you lay down onto the chase. And you're back at the doorway. This time, you know the path well, and the doorway doesn't lock, so you can leave if you need to, but it closes behind you and separates you from the outside world completely as you take that first step down to four, three, two, one, and you lay down. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. You see, the subject lays down next to the silhouette. They lean back into the chase and relax there, just letting their body drape over it. The silhouette leans close and whispers into their ear. Now, let me tell you a story. You see, the subject lies down next to the silhouette, relaxed and safe, somewhere apart from the rest of the world, private. They find it easy to relax, easy to listen. And the silhouette leans close. He whispers, Let me tell you a story. The subject lies down next to the silhouette and relaxes. Safe. Private. It's effortless. Just focus on his words. Let them flow from ear to mind smoothly. He leans close. Let me tell you a story. He whispers. And the subject listens. They relax. Breathing deep in, out, and let themselves sink down into the leather of the chase. So relaxed, they feel heavy. The silhouette leans in. Let me tell you a story, he whispers. The subject lays down deep into the relaxing cushion of the chase, sinking deeper deeper until it feels like they might sink all the way through. He leans in. Let me tell you a story. The subject lays down on the chase, sinking deep, deep, so deep that they sink through, down into an inviting darkness below. Let me tell you a story. The subject floats there, deep, heavy, away from everything. His stars glimmer in the background. 
The purple cloud of a nebula twists in on itself, spiraling curls of multicolored gas and dust. A ringed planet slowly rotates. Let me tell you a story. The subject floats in space, totally relaxed and totally separate from the world, away from everything private, safe. What happens here stays here, and they can just float, calm and relaxed. The silhouette leans close and whispers, Let me tell you a story. You see, the subject lies down on the brown with their chase, and as they relax, they feel oddly light, as if stresses and worries have fallen away. It feels almost as if they could float up into the sky. Let me tell you a story. You see, the subject feels themselves floating up, worries and stresses falling away, like anchors with their ropes cut. Through the ceiling up into a blue sky, where they fall into the cushion of a cloud. Let me tell you a story. The subject floats weightless and carefree in a blue sky surrounded by clouds lighter than air than the world below so far away they can smile and enjoy themselves without worry. The silhouette leans close and whispers, let me tell you a story. The subject lies down next to the silhouette on a soft leather chase. Somehow, at once, they're heavy with relaxation and light and carefree. And focus comes effortlessly. Lying down, listening. Let me tell you a story. The silhouette offers a hand and helps up the subject, leading them through an oaken door with gold trim. Beyond is a cobblestone pathway leading into a tunnel of trees. The silhouette leads the subject down the pathway. It's sunny at first, the heat gently warming the skin, and it's easy to see the pathway. As we cross into the forest, however, the sunlight is dappled with shadows of leaves, but the subject still has the hand of the silhouette. Guiding them. It grows darker and darker until it becomes pitch. But with the silhouette guiding them, all they need to do is follow along. The silhouette leans in close and whispers, Let me tell you a story. You see, the subject lies down next to the silhouette on a beach, feeling themselves sink into silky, supportive sand. Soothing waves lick at their toes, rinsing away stress. The waves rise higher up their feet to their ankles, and all those muscles relax. Everything from the ankles down, totally relaxed. Waves ride up to their calves, to their knees, and all that tension is washed away totally relaxed from the knees down, up, up their thighs and hips to their waist, tension and ties, and they relax from the waist down, up, up their chest and hands and arms to their shoulders, muscles and tension unwind, relaxing from the neck down, then the waves rise up and their jaw, their tongue, their cheeks, their temples, even their eyes relax, and their tension melts away from the top of their head to the tip of their toes. In the distance, they can hear waves crashing against rocks, the faraway cry of gulls, the song of their sea. A gentle breeze caresses the cheek, seeming to whisper, relax. Above, clouds pass by, gradually shifting and changing. And as each puff passes by the horizon, 
They can just let it all go. They can just sink into the sand, deep, relaxed. Let me tell you a story. The subject lies down next to the silhouette, and you're in an empty space. Chrome floors and a sky of cyan stars pepper the night sky. Nice and relaxed. You find yourself zoning out, staring off at a point, feeling a pull at your attention. Your mind follows it, and as I count down from ten, you watch the shimmering energy of your mind fade off into the distance. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. And zero. As it dissipates into the void. Now. I'll take care of your mind, and you'll find it back when you need it. But next, I'll take control of the body, starting with your feet and toes. Clench your muscles at the base of your toes, curl them up. One, two, three, and relax. Now, your calves and below. Flex. One, two, three, relax. Now your thighs and below. Flex. One, two, three. Ah. Hips, thighs, chest. And one, two, three. Relax. Arms, shoulders, neck, and down. One, two, three. Relax. Now include your jaw, tongue. Cheeks, eyes, neck, and your whole body stretch. One, two, three, relax. Now, let me tell you a story. Your body is beginning to shift. First, you feel a tail press out from the small of your back. It nearly bursts into fiery fluff and swishes through the air, prompting a slight laugh. Your face stretches forward into a muzzle, and you can feel it in your hands when you grab at it. Paw pads start to pop into place on your fingers, one by one. Index, middle, ring, pinky, thumb. They're black and sensitive. A wave of reddish fur rolls out from them, first encasing your hands like gloves. It's only a second before it continues down the rest of your body, surrounding you in a layer of lovely red fur. Two triangular ears spring up. First one, then the other, fading away your old ears into the sides of your head. Your teeth become pointy, but cute. Your clothes shift too. A top hat sits itself down on your head while a tuxedo with two long coat tails wrap around your torso and a blue rose corsage blooms from your pocket. It's almost like magic. And isn't that appropriate? After all, magic is such a big part of what you do. It started when you were young. The first thing you saw was a sleight of hand trick. A simple coin from your ear. Your father had playfully done it, and you'd been amazed. Then when he showed you the trick of it, you began playing with coins, hiding them, palming them, drawing them with no one knowing. You could make a coin jump from one hand to another, or have it even reappear on someone else's person. Clever palming and pickpocketing, but easily enough to amaze the kids at school. Then you continued to play with coins, after a lot of your practice, you were able to perform flashy tricks like rolling coins between your fingers or rapidly tossing them from one hand to the next. By high school, you could juggle them. Some teachers suggested you pursue a real job, like being an accountant since money was such a fascination, 
Maybe try out economics, another suggested. And you did. However, you were bored to tears, but you applied yourself to the best of your ability. Everyone told you how important it was to be practical, and if you worked in finances, you'd be secure for sure. But every night, as you laid in bed, you could only think of a future in some company with dread. Then your English teacher offered something else. When you came into class, there was a pamphlet already waiting on your desk. You looked back at him and he gestured to it. So you read. It was an application form. Auditions for a stage magician's assistant. You recognized the name Sebastian the Conjurer. You'd actually been looking forward to this at the beginning of the year. But after repeated discouragement by most of your teachers, you'd felt it was pointless to try. But here it was in front of your nose. You should try out said the soothing voice of your teacher as he leaned over your desk. You're good with your hands. You have a strong presence. I believe you'd do well. Yeah, you responded. You didn't really believe him, but something possessed you to fill out the form anyways. You know, you could fail at the sensible thing too. Might as well shoot for something you at least want, he said. You sent it that night with a homemade video of some of your favorite coin tricks. Something about trying already felt good. As it uploaded, you knew that succeed or fail, you'd done your best. Being true to yourself felt good. There were a few weeks that passed uneventfully, but even then, you could feel a lightness in your step. You went back to learning tricks in between studies, and you hadn't realized how much you missed it. Sebastian was huge for a magician, it was a big part of how he was able to keep the crowd's attention. Towering over the audience, even without a stage, made him impossible to miss. And his over-the-top charisma and booming voice only further magnified his magnetism. You'd seen his performances before, even envied the tremendous gravity he exuded. That's what made the reply emails such a shock. Short, listed, you whispered to yourself. Shortlisted. That was good. People in the drama club were always ecstatic at it. A response requested. With your heart in your chest, you ran to your parents with your laptop in tow, unwilling to look away for even a second, lest it disappear. They joined you in celebration, and with their arms around you, you organized a meeting with Sebastian. You were practicing in a frenzy for the meeting. The audition whatever test would be needed, just to give the best of yourself. But when you got there, Bastion stopped you. You're my first choice. If you accept a role as my assistant, I'll have you. You excused yourself a moment to call your parents. Your fingers shook as you typed in their number, but you managed to call them. And when you came back and told Sebastian of their approval, he threw his arms open wide. Sparks flew from behind them, and flames jetted from his fingers. Then let us celebrate to a new era of magic. His booming voice roared, and then he looked at you, arms still wide with a warm smile, and you realized that the display was set up just for you. Was he trying to impress you? Had you left that impression of him? You rushed into a hug with the giant, and he lifted you up about as easily as could be. Even as a near adult, he could comfortably sit you on his shoulder. And that's how you began your partnership with Sebastian. He was charismatic and powerful. You were witty and dexterous. He'd make a grandiose speech and you'd follow up with a joke. You could make things appear in places where they shouldn't be. Very helpful when promoting performances. To have the flyers simply appear in pockets. It was long and fulfilling. As an ever clever assistant, you had no shortage of tricks up your sleeves and never struggled to keep up with Sebastian's flashy showmanship. And never struggled to keep up with Sebastian's flashy showmanship. It felt good, true to yourself, and right. Now, let me tell you a story. 
The subject lies down next to the silhouette, and they feel themselves relaxing. They take some time to breathe, just relaxing there in the calm. They can set of themselves, regain whatever focus they may have lost. Like a still pond, they become tranquil. Shafts of bamboo rustle in the wind. Their muzzle, their fur, their tail slowly recedes as they lower back down to earth in their bed, as if this was all a dream. And just like all dreams, this too must end. So I'm going to count out one last time, and you'll rise up. You'll feel relaxed, refreshed, and satisfied. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Wake up. I hope you enjoyed yourself. The purpose of this exercise was for you to get an understanding of how to visualize yourself and how to be in someone else's shoes. It's just a mask that we put on, a costume that we assume. Perhaps with luck, I might have you visualize someone else in the future. Until then, I hope to see you again some other day. Thank you for listening.